from the Cosmopolitan Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube, covering Koopa Inspire 2019. Brought to you by Koopa. Welcome to theCUBE, Lisa Martin on the ground at Koopa Inspire 19 from the Cosmopolitan in Vegas. And I'm pleased to be joined by one of Koopa's spend setters from Highmark Health, Gary Foster, the VP of Procurement. Gary, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, it's a pleasure to be here. So we're here with about 2,300 folks or so. I think this is the eighth Koopa Inspire. Lots of energy and excitement this morning in the general session as yes. Rob kicked that off. Um, there is some of the interesting things that I've learned about Koopa in the last uh, short while, including this morning, was that there's now $1.2 trillion of spend going through being managed by the Koopa platform. Mm -hmm. Tremendous community of data and so imperative as the role of the chief procurement officer is changing, the CFO is changing. You are a veteran in the procurement industry. Before we talk about Highmark Health, give me a little bit of an overview of some of the things that you've seen change in procurement and where you think we are today in terms of that role being not only very strategic, but very influential to the top line of a business. Okay, it's a great question. Um, I have spent a, a, a little over three decades in procurement. Um, so we've come a long way from back then. There was a lot of uh, carryover from the uh, industrialization era and the uh, post uh, World War II and Korean War era, et cetera, where it really wasn't even called procurement. It was, it was purchasing. And uh, it was a bit of the darling in the manufacturing industry because that's what that had such a high impact on the cost of goods sold. And as you got into uh, other organizations, it was kind of relegated to a back office function, very transactional, very administrative, very clerical. Uh, so it really took someone with a lot of guts and a lot of vision to say, we can be, we can be more than that. We can, we can, we can provide insights, we can, we can deliver efficient, transaction work and free up people to do more more advisory type of roles. Um, so I'm pleased to say I, I experimented with that early on in my in my procurement career. And that has been the shift that I think is, is continuing on. The whole uh, buzz around digitization is another enabler to free up the, the talent that we have that we can put into providing insights and predictions and becoming true strategy uh, advisors to the business. So when the most recent, uh, so I've, I've had four teams that I've taken over to either completely transform or build from the ground up. And this most recent one, uh, I've sort of mashed up a lot of things that I've learned over the past you know, three decades to try to prepare them for what I, where I believe that the, the profession is going, where I believe the function is going. So back to your original question, it's really evolved a lot from that back office transactional, uh, just focus on price, a little bit on supply reliability if it was in manufacturing, to slowly but surely start evolving to what can you do to help us with some business objectives and do we trust you with some important strategic initiatives that we need to accomplish as a company or, or in my in my business. Right, so it sounds so early on that you had this awareness of there's pockets, there's silos of, of spend and purchasing happening there that we don't have the visibility into, because we're talking a lot about that today with, right. that's, that's what today's CPO and CFO really need is that visibility and control. Right. Especially as the, all of these, you know, forcing functions or disruptors happen like, you know, the more regulatory requirements or companies growing organically or inorganically. And suddenly there's many, many areas within a business that are buying and spending. Right. And if they don't have that awareness and visibility into it, there's a, not only is it obviously a, it's a cost issue, but one of your points too, from a resource utilization perspective, right. there's a lot of opportunities missed. So it sounds right. like you kind of saw that early on in your career, that there's there are things going on, we need to get visibility into all of this. Yes, yes, and it's that's probably the, you know, that's one of the foundational building blocks is to get a good handle on where's the where's the money going. So the financial side of the house understands it from their journal entries and from their their cost centers, but procurement 
really great world-class procurement brings a different lens that the business doesn't, doesn't think of and that the financial industry, financial segment of the business doesn't think of. So that's, uh, but you're really kind of a you know a chicken and egg thing. You can't really provide the insights if you don't have your hands on on the information, and the information has got to be usable, right? The old you know data versus information you know absolutely quandary. That's very very much the case um, with procurement, but you can't get bogged down in going for perfection because then you'll you'll just analysis paralysis, you won't get out of that out of that, that cycle and you'll never be able to provide. So you have to know, you have to kind of have a gut feel that this is enough, this is directionally correct. Let's let's take this to the next level. Let's start start moving with here's what here are the patterns that we see, here's what we think is happening, here's where we think there are there are issues, right? Um, so th those I think are some of the some of the foundational pieces to the to the spend analysis question. So talk to us a little bit about Highmark Health, there, uh, what you're doing there, and how you guys are really focused on changing America's approach to healthcare, which I think would be welcomed by a lot of people, <laughs> by the way. Yes, we have a very, very uh, ambitious goal. Um, we believe we can be a catalyst to change healthcare in America. How so? Well, first of all, we think that the model is wrong. If you think about the way that the healthcare industry has grown up in the in the U.S., you went to you went to a hospital because you were either sick or injured. You had to go to those locations. You had to follow those procedures. You had to fill out those forms. You had to you know you went to where the care was, and you had to had to you know bend to your your schedule to whatever was available. Right? We've all experienced trying to get an appointment with. Uh, with a doctor and it's you know four months out right so we're doing you know we this was a year and a half ago we introduced same day appointments All right so we so we have both a, a hospital system and an insurance company so we can see kind of the whole value chain okay through the healthcare experience and one of the fundamentals that we're doing is we're tr we're we're trying to bring a, a retail mindset to healthcare where the wellness comes to you, ah, as opposed to you having to go somewhere to access your health or to uh, get connected with uh, with with experts that can advise you or for checkups, etc. Um, so, uh, you know, you're wearing an Apple Watch. Uh, you know, that's only one of there's Fitbits, etc. There's there's a multitude of wearables that are coming. The the combination of IOT and healthcare and big data is intersecting at a rapid rate right. where we will be we are already able to look at millions of records of, uh, of chart information about patterns of diagnoses and we know that we know that the, the data tells us that if we can get people to engage in in their health and make small changes and just learn more, edu be educated and learn more about health. We know that the long-term costs of their healthcare will go down, right? So we are looking to partner, we obviously can't do this all on our own. Right. So this is not a David and Goliath kind of a thing. So we're looking actively to partner with breaking company, lead, lead companies and break, uh, uh, breaking technology companies to be partners with us on this journey of how do we bring health to people and help improve their health, you know, lower their their more their their disease rates, um, provide better quality of life, lower their lower their, their cost of health care, lower all the complications. You can see the graphs, right? It all runs, you know, as you get as you get older if you don't take care of yourself, right, you know, the the complications of healthcare issues just go exponentially up, right? And we know we can bend that curve down if we can transform the way that health is thought of and delivered to people in the country. Well, I, I, I'm already signed, I'm, I've, you've got me. <laughs> so talk to me though about, from a technology perspective, if we think about all the emerging technologies, you mentioned IOT, millions and millions of devices, we are sometimes overly connected. Yes. Um, 
What is the opportunity that Highmark is working on with Coupa to be able to start changing that mindset and bringing that retail model to healthcare? How are they helping to ignite that? Well, it's not in a direct connection with Coupa. Coupa is our, is our procurement platform. Uh, so it enables us to provide efficient transactions and, and we get data insights. Um, so Coupa is very much an enabler for us in this process. Um, what, what I would say is, and this goes back to the, the evolution of, of procurement as a profession, by having Coupa and other technologies at the fingertips of my team, it frees them to immerse themselves into their client's business as well as their categories. So if they're, if I have someone who's a category manager of digital marketing, they can immerse themselves into that and they can work, they, I, my folks go, they attend uh, senior level staff meetings. They have one-on-ones with executive VPs. Uh, they co-locate with, uh, with the client on a regular basis. So we really immerse ourselves into it. So what Coupa is doing is it's allowing us to spend less time on transactions and process, and process and more time learning the business, more time understanding the industries that they operate in, looking for innovation, and bringing those innovative partners to, to the business that wouldn't necessarily have happened on its own. Right. So we have this incredible network, particularly if we have people that really, really have a passion for procurement, and really have a passion for being intimate with the customer. I know it's an overused phrase, but the trusted advisor status is definitely where we should be. That's and you know the Coupa org- the Coupa platform and tools enable my team to have to bring those insights and those opportunities to the business. And we've gotten uh, tremendous accolades from the CEO through the entire C-suite about the level of business partnership that the procurement organization has with uh, with all of the various areas of the Highmark organization. So you have this visibility now that you didn't have before with Coupa. Yes. This control. It sounds like your resources and, and different parts of the organization are much better able to use their time to be strategic on other projects and yes. to really start bringing that retail experience out there. So Coupa kind of as a, you mentioned, as an enabler is really kind of foundational to that. I know you've actually won some awards, I think, Rob Bernstein actually mentioned this on stage this morning that you took top honors at the Procurement Leaders inaugural America's Procurement Awards. Yes. You've also been recognized as a Procurement Leader of the Year for transforming Highmark Health. So what I love about the story is it's showing how procurement, not only is it has it transitioned tremendously to be very strategic, but you're trend, helping to transform an industry by getting this visibility on everywhere where there's spend there that Operationally, Highmark Health seems to have a, a, a big leg up. Yes, yeah, it, uh, you know, no one can be everywhere at this at once, and if we can if we can earn that trust, um, then the people in the business who are hired to play certain roles, strategy development or whatever, if they're if they will let us help them with our expertise. They can spend. They are. They're more effective in their role, right? Because they're not doing procurement work. They're not talking to suppliers. They're not negotiating deals. They're not looking. You know, and let us provide that service, that professional service to them, really as a consultant, as an advisor, and bring companies that the more we get in in depth into understanding the industries that we're buying in, the more we're learning about emerging companies. You know. Who are the innovators? Who are the disruptors? Bringing those organizations, because we're studying that in, in our markets, to our business partner and, and making that introduction, which sparks an idea, which sparks an opportunity for the, the two to work together collaboratively on something new, um, or to resolve an issue that has, has not been uh, been addressed in the, never, no one's found an answer to in the past. Well, you've put this really strong foundation in place that not only gives you the visibility and control, but it's going to allow Highmark Health on this ambitious goal, as you mentioned, about bringing wellness to us. And of course, there's there's the whole, oh, there's the human in the way. So maybe tomorrow, Deepak Chopra, who's keynoting, will be able to give you guys some insight into how to help these people, and it's all of us people, right? 
really embrace mindfulness to be able to focus more on our passions. But what you guys are doing to transform um, healthcare is really inspirational. So Gary, thank you. Thank you very for much. For joining me on theCUBE today. It was a pleasure. Likewise. For Gary Foster, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE from Coupa Inspire 19. Thanks for watching.